Okay guys, we're gonna go into some concepts about backswing and downswing and try to clear up some misconceptions for you. So a common question that I ask a lot of my students when we're here in person, um, one of the first things we'll start with when I see certain behaviors, particularly swings over the top or left paths or out to end, typically I'll have the students set up to play a shot and then I'll ask them to use their trail hand, make a pointer finger and point in whichever the direction they think of as quote unquote back. Now you might guess, if you think about that just for a second, put yourself in that position and think, where would I point? Most people point this direction. Okay, so then I usually ask the student, well, okay, if you're standing in line for something, waiting to get into a concert or a football game, if you're standing in line, back is actually this direction. And this way would be to the right. If I were a left-handed player, I would have obviously been facing this way and pointed to my left. So the reason this is significant is because typically players who are thinking in that way are considering the target to be the flag or the fairway. So they think toward the target must be forward, opposite the target has to be backward. It just makes common sense. In reality, the frame of reference is wrong in that case. Your target is your golf ball. So forward and back relate to you, not to your flag over there, right? So back is here, forward is there. Now I want, I want to make sure this concept is clear because the first thing we're going to do when we go from here is we're going to make a back swing. Okay, so back is that way. If that's where I'm trying to go with my hands, I'd want to spend no time moving my hands and club to the right. We're trying to get the club head in line with my hands from this camera view. All that really does is satisfies a two-dimensional concept, but you're a three-dimensional thing. So is your golf club, so is your ball. So this is back, that's to the right. So if we're making a backswing, we need to waste no time moving the hands and club back. So we're gonna go there, back. Okay, that's a backswing. Now from there, we have to return the club to the ball. So it's important to understand what we did physically to make a backswing. So typically, well, not typically, always, golfers rotate their trunk away from their ball, clockwise for right-handed players, counterclockwise for left, and they also fold their trail arm at the elbow and the wrist. So those two things are the major occurrences of every backswing that's ever been made. Name the player, it doesn't matter if they're upright, if they're flat, if they're outside, if they're inside, it could be any swing that you've ever seen player will have turned his body away or her body away from the target and folded the trail arm. So to make contact with the ball, we have to undo those two things, right? So I've made my back swing. Now to get back to the ball, I can't just turn myself or my club would miss the ball by five feet. I also can't just straighten my arm out or I'd miss the ball by four feet. I have to do both to get the club back to the ball. So that means I have a choice of sequence in which to make those motions. So if you have an outside to end path, the cause of that, very simply, is choosing to rotate the body and extend the arm second. So we rotate the body first, extend the arm second, and you can see the club arrives at the ball from outside to end. Consequently, we could also choose to extend the arm first and have the, the body rotate second. That's gonna give me that in to out path. Now, the second of those things, in the first example, I turned, my arm extended. In the second example, I extended my arm and then turned. The second option in either of those sequences is an automatic occurrence. So you only have to think of one or the other. So if I want to produce an out to end path, let's say I wanted to play a fade, Obviously, I'm going to make a backswing first, and then I'm going to rotate my chest and just allow my arm to release. That'll give me an out to end path and a fading shot. Now, of course, the fade also depends on the club face. We'll talk about that in another video. So, if I wanted to produce an in to out path, then I'm just going to change the sequence. So, I'll move the club back behind me to make my backswing and begin the downswing by lengthening my right arm right down the side of my body.
that's going to give me an in to out path. That will also shallow the attack angle, whereas the first example would steepen the attack angle. So you can simplify your concepts for motion if you just realize, okay, there are some basic macro movements that if I choose to make them in certain orders, I'm going to yield different outcomes with the path and the attack angle. Give it a watch again, take some notes, make sure you understand it. I'm sure it'll benefit your game.